Base launch tracker and countdown net, pad is clear. 10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello, and welcome to our webcast coverage of the O3B Empower mission for our customer FES. On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 6.12 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. My name is Yomizo and I'm a propulsion engineer here at SpaceX, joining you today from SpaceX headquarters here in Hawthorne, California. Today's launch marks SpaceX's 226th overall mission, the second launch this week, with the potential of a third of our Falcon Heavy vehicle awaiting liftoff at our neighboring pad in just over an hour from now, as long as weather cooperates. Now, some of our longtime viewers might know that FES was one of SpaceX's earliest launch customers and has been a key partner in a number of firsts with us. FES was the first commercial satellite operator to launch on Falcon 9 from the Cape back in December of 2013, and the first customer to fly on a flight proven booster on March of 2017. Today's launch will mark the second of five total O3B Empower launches. We launched the first two O3B Empower spacecraft in December of last year, and today we will be launching two additional O3B Empower spacecraft into space. Now, FES's O3B Empower system will operate from medium Earth orbit, or MEO and comprises an initial constellation of 11 high throughput and low latency satellites, as well as an extensive ground infrastructure. Collaboratively designed with Boeing, the O3B Empower is FES's second generation MEO system. And with that, here's a video sharing a bit more about our mission today. Another launch, another milestone. Three, two, one. Today marks an important step on the way to a new era of satellite service. SES's third and fourth O3B Empower satellites are ready to be launched into space. And lift off of they will join the first pair of satellites 8,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface in the medium Earth orbit. From government operations critical to national security, to underserved communities across island nations, to cruise passengers in the middle of the ocean, O3B Empower ensures an extraordinary satellite-enabled network experience where high-speed connectivity is secure and reliable at all times. O3B Empower is scaled ridiculously from our original O3B constellation, and that means in fixed data, in aero, in crews, and in government, we're able to take our base capability but deliver it to so many more users simultaneously and with 10 times the capability. By offering industry best throughput, predictable performance, high availability, and unprecedented flexibility, O3B Empower makes it possible for SES's customers to carry out critical applications, to delight end users, and to grow new revenue streams. Together with more than 30 technology partners, SES has been rolling out the O3B Empower ground system worldwide. The next generation ground equipment is more portable easier to install and more efficient, enabling faster access to secure and reliable O3B M-Power services. A new era of high performance is here. Are you ready? On your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 vehicle. The two-stage Falcon 9 stands 229 feet tall, or slightly taller than the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. When it's fully fueled, it'll hold just over a million pounds of propellant that the vehicle will burn through in less than three minutes after liftoff. We began loading those propellants on both stages at about T minus 35 minutes. 
Now, starting from the very top of the rocket, our payload today is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is that structure at the very top of the rocket. It's made out of a carbon composite material. The fairing protects satellites on their way to orbit, and the fairing halves will be jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. Now, for today's mission, we have two spacecraft on the second stage and inside the fairing. Each payload will deploy at separate times, about six minutes apart from each other. And the fairing halves supporting today's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its third time and the other half flying for its fourth time. Now, just below the payload fairing, we have the second stage that will take the O3BM power payload to space. The second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine about two and a half minutes into flight and then relight for a second and third time before we deploy the two satellites. Below the second stage, we have the inner stage, which is that part of the, which is a part of the first stage. And as you can see on your screen, the carbon fiber inner stage has a distinct black color because it is unpainted TPS or thermal protection system and it protects the composite material of the inner stage. Now, at the bottom of the first stage, there are nine Merlin, Merlin engines that will get the Falcon 9 off the ground and up into the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Shortly after liftoff, the first and second stages will separate from one another. Then the second stage will continue to orbit while the first stage will start making its way back down to Earth. The first stage is designed to be reflown with minimal refurbishment between flights. Today's booster is actually flying for the second time, having previously supported the Crew-6 mission back in March, a little less than two months ago. Now, if we're successful in recovering the booster on screen, it will mark the 188th successful recovery of an orbital-class rocket. And lastly, that large truss Thank structure... Thank you for Strawback Retract. That large truss structure is the Strongback, or the TE, Transporter Erector. As you heard on that call out, we are pressing for the Strongback retraction. But the TE is what routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground system to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the path. Strongback retract has started. Yeah, you heard that call out that the sequence for starting strong pack retraction has begun. You'll physically see the strong back retract in just a few moments. Now, while we're, while we're waiting for the TE to retract, you'll see that the clamp arms just below the fairing are opening there. You can see that they have opened up. Now the first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged, so it will retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. And as you heard, the strong back is also what the launch team refers to as the transporter erector. And at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first and second stages should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage finishing up at T minus three minutes here in just about 15 seconds, and the second stage at T minus two minutes. Now those white clouds you see around the vehicle is the chill stage gas. One, lock load of, complete. There's that call out that stage one liquid oxygen loading is complete. Stage two should follow shortly in just about a minute. Now again, that venting white cloud that you see is from the TE loss line and is totally expected. Now at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup and this means the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown and just inside of T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. Now, FES's O3B M power payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is currently a watch item, but we're pushing towards our T0 at 6.12 p.m. Eastern time in hopes of clear skies, and the range is ready for support.
Stage two, locks load complete. Stage two, locks loading should be completing here shortly. Now again, at T minus one minute, Falcon 9 will be in startup where the first and second stages will begin pressurizing for launch and Falcon's internal flight computers will take over the launch Ground gas close up. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. The internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. LD, go for launch. We have launch directors go for launch. All systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with the O3B M power payload. T minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engine full power. And go. Falcon nine and SCS O three D M power. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Vehicle's pitching down range. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off of Pad 40 Normal at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying the O3B M power payload. During ascent, we tilt the engines, technically called gimbling, and this turns the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. You heard that call out that the vehicle is now supersonic, and we will be throttling the engines down in preparation for a max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure in just a couple of seconds. Now we pass through max Q and the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid and being pulled back down to earth. You heard the call out that MVAC engine shell has begun. Now this is in preparation for three events coming up in quick succession, which is main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine startup one. So this will, these three events will all be happening in about 30 seconds here, starting with main engine cutoff of those first stage engines that you can see on your screen right now. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there you heard and saw the three events happening back to back main engine cutoff, stage separation, and that second engine startup one of our second stage. You can see those grid fins on the first stage deploying 
as the first stage begins to make its way back down to Earth. Now, the next event in just a few seconds here will be fairing separation, where the two halves of the fairings will separate to reveal our O3B M-Power satellites. Fairing separation confirmed. There's that confirmation of fairing separation, and we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back down to Earth using our recovery vessel, Bob. It's T plus three minutes and 50 seconds here into today's mission, and we are in the first of two planned MVAC burns for satellite deployment. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. In about two and a half minutes here at T plus six minutes and 30 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn. Now for this entry burn, we relight three of the M1D engines, starting with the center E9 engine, followed shortly by the E1 and E5 engines, which are all in a row. And this entry burn will slow the vehicle as it passes down into the Earth's atmosphere. Beautiful views from the first and second stages on your screen. Now the first stage is making its way back down, preparing for its entry burn. We need to perform this entry burn to help reduce re-entry forces on the first stage, which will help us recover and reuse the booster. Now again, during the re-entry burn, the first stage on the left will decelerate by firing its Merlin engines. It'll fire three out of the nine engines, and this will actually cause the vehicle to fly down through the plume, which will deposit some of that soot back onto Falcon 9. Beautiful views from the first and second stage. Again, that second stage is in the first of three planned burns carrying our two O3B M power satellites. And the first stage is coming down, awaiting the start of its entry burn at T plus six minutes and 30 seconds. This will be about a 20 second entry burn. You can see the Vehicle speed. On the normal trajectory. You can see the speed of both the first and second stages on the bottom left and right hand side of your screens, respectively. First stage is about to start its entry burn. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one entry burn startup. There's the start of the first stage entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. And that was a good entry burn from the first stage. Again, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in things like critical scientific research. Now, the Falcon 9 first stage that's supporting today's mission just performed its entry burn for the second time after previously having supported the Crew-6 launch just last month. Now, the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, whereas that MVAC engine you see on the second stage there is optimized for vacuum which just means that it has a much bigger nozzle compared to the M1D engines on the first stage. Now, coming up in about 20 seconds, we'll have the shutdown of our MVAC engine on the second stage, followed quickly by the landing burn on our first stage. Stage one transonic, stage two FTS is saved.
there with confirmation of second engine cutoff. Nominal parking orbit insertion. And a nominal orbital insertion. Stage one landing burn. There is the start of our stage one landing burn and you can see that drone ship coming in quick. Stage one landing leg deploy. What an awesome view of that first stage recovery. Everyone's very excited here in Hawthorne. And there you have it, that landing marks SpaceX's 188th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landing of Falcon 9 and Heavy. But the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. Now, after this coast phase, we will light that MVAC engine for a second time around the T plus 27 minute mark. So we'll see you here, back here in about 17 minutes.
acquisition of the Nolga Bone. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the O3B M-Power satellites for our customer SES. Falcon 9 launched on time at 6.12 p.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40. In addition to an on-time liftoff, we had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, and the first of three burns of the second stage, bearing separation, and a successful first stage landing, which marked our 188th recovery of an orbital class booster and the second landing for this particular first stage. Now we're coming up on our second relight and shutdown of our MVAC engine at T plus 27 minutes and 10 seconds. So in just about 10 seconds, we will do a short 30 second relight in our second engine startup too. There you can see second engine startup two. And this burn is planned to last about 30 seconds. There is second engine cut off too. We'll wait to hear confirmation of a good orbit from the teams. Nominal transfer orbit insertion. There is that confirmation of a good orbit. We have one more second stage to burn before the deployments of our O3B Empower payloads and satellites. The third and final burn of our second stage should occur in about 80 minutes from now. So until then, enjoy these views of space, and we'll see you again then.
acquisition of signal, part of these stock.
Acquisition of signal, Maldives. Expected loss of signal, part of the stock.